It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Philadelphia Eagles and the Los Angeles Rams. And it kicks off next on Madden NFL 24. This is the city, Los Angeles, California. That's where we are for this edition of the NFL on EA Sports. Today, we've got a solid matchup in store in the NFC, as it'll be the Philadelphia Eagles taking on the Los Angeles Rams. Brandon Gaunt and Charles Davis, thrilled to be with you from the broadcast booth. And partner, before we get this thing started, what are you going to be watching? Who gets off to a fast start? In horse racing terms, they talk about catching a flyer out of the gate. Who sets the pace and makes the other team chase? from SoFi Stadium. Taken at the goal line. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. So here are the Rams set to go to work on offense. And they're led by a man who topped the 50,000-yard mark in passing for his career a season ago. In year 15 now, here's Matthew Stafford. Stafford and the Rams won it all in Super Bowl 56, but last season was a stark contrast to that. The Rams need their quarterback to recapture his form from two seasons ago to help spark another postseason run. Play action, Stafford. And his first pass is incomplete. I don't see more of them trying to get him the football out of the backfield. They love what he can do in open space, and they believe that he creates mismatches they can exploit. Second and 10. Stafford. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively, and now it brings up third down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived, and I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, time to... Now the pressure comes, and he goes down. Just inside the 10, back at the 9. That sack courtesy of the effort of Hassan Reddick. It always helps for a visiting team to come in and set the tone on defense. In fact, when we talked with them prior to the game, they said they wanted this home crowd to feel like they had to hide their valuables when they were in town. <laughs> well, the home crowd quiet now early. See if their offense can take over and get some points on the board. Here comes the Rams punter now, as his first punt will come from inside his own end zone. So a change of possession here on the punt, and the Eagles will have great starting field position here as they take over. So here come the Eagles, the defending NFC champs, led out by a man who was the runner-up to Patrick Mahomes at MVP balloting a season ago. Of course, that's Jalen Hurts. And we already knew that Hurts was a good quarterback, but last year, he moved to elite status. Under his guidance, the Eagles returned to the Super Bowl and nearly won it. And he's also one of the league's most dangerous players, thrown for 38 touchdowns his last two seasons and run for another 23. They go with a former Lion, it's DeAndre Swift. And he is gonna be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. 
The all-everything defensive tackle, Aaron Donald, the one who made the play there. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness, he's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. Here's Hurts to throw. He'll get this one complete. That's A.J. Brown. That'll go for a gain of seven. And it brings up third and five now. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Hurts. I had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. Bit because they needed to come through with a completion there. Now a drive that started with great field position is facing fourth down. Here's Jake Elliott. Career long, by the way, for him, 61 yards. This will be from 56 yards out. And that one will be no good. He never had it online. It's well wide to the left, and this will remain a scoreless game. And any time you see a kicker trot out to try one from 56 yards, you know everything's got to come off perfectly for it to have a chance. If the laces aren't quite right, if he doesn't hit the fat part of the ball just right, it's unlikely to go through, and that one winds up no good. So the missed 56 yarder, and now the flip side. Good starting field position at the 46 near midfield. They start the drive with Evans. And a solid run here as he'll pick his way down to the 42 yard line. A quick first down pickup. Good start after going three and out on their opening drive. That O line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only the control and things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to the linebacker spot, the secondary spot, getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. Now second and nine. Straight ahead, it's Evans. Not much there, maybe a couple as he's taken down at the 40. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. If they want a first, they need to get the football to the 32 here on third down. Now a play fake it at Stafford. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Fourth down now looming after Philly's defense stands tall in coverage. Hard I came into this game eager to see how they would hold up in man coverage. And on that play, they held up quite well. Here's Ethan Evans now. And this one's out of bounds. Should be inside the 10, I think it is, at the six-yard line. So back onto the field, here come the Eagles for their second drive. And they were in field goal range the last time out, but couldn't connect. And it's early in the game, so I don't think that the confidence just goes entirely out of, you know, running your kicker back out there. But let's face it, some coaches have a little bit less patience for that than others. Let's see if they call the game differently now in terms of what they do on drives and not try and settle for field goals. On the ground, it's Swift to start the drive. And he is going to lose yardage here. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. But the converse is, though, you've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks. And when you don't, that's the result you end up with. Now the third-year man, here's Kenneth Gainwell. And able to use his stiff arm for a little bit of leverage before he's taken down. A pretty good game. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. So 
from second and long. Now we go to third and very manageable. Yeah, they love that phrase, don't they? Because as an offensive coordinator, you can keep people a little bit off balance in guessing because you don't have to throw it. You can come back with a strong run game. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And he is going to have an Eagles first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And let's face it, that what we just saw there, not a surprise, is it? I mean, this is what he does well. And if you don't tackle him as soon as he catches the ball, <laughs> this is the end result. Big yardage after it. Got the speed, the agility, so good with run after catch. And we're only in the first quarter, so they better get a wrangle and a hold on that quickly. Yeah, you're exactly right. And what's really difficult to try and defend him is if you want to press him so that you get him on the ground quickly after the catch, a lot of times he'll just run past you at the initial point of contact, and he'll go deep. So the completion good for six yards, and that will bring up second down. Ah, that's tough to play zone defense when they can just curl up right there in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we talk about finding the soft spot defensively. How do you make sure they don't find the soft spot like they did there? Tough to do because what they normally will do is run routes that will pull you out of that spot they want to get in. Oh, it's out. Smith lost it. And now the Rams have got it. Going the other way. And they'll set up shot in territory at the 45 yard line we have seen this before and we know coaches preach about this and work on it all the time catch the ball you know there's going to be some traffic somewhere they've got to put it away and secure it as they try and get downfield la readies for its next possession and partner i know so far and we're still in the first half but you love this game as a defensive guy zero to zero we'll see if the offense can get going on this drive well, you know how they talk about music to your ears? How about what it does for your eyes when you watch something like this, right, where these teams are locked in and going at it, no points going up on the scoreboard. I'm loving it. You're exactly right. Well, switch over, though, to an offensive mindset for a moment. What do they need to do here to get on track and get some points? Well, I think a couple of ways. Number one, you pull out something maybe they haven't seen before. Coaches always talk about unscouted looks. Maybe you give them something that they haven't seen on tape, and now you shock them that way. The second, run your basic playbook, but run it so well that you give your skill position guys a chance to make big plays individually. They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. Stafford. Gonna be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. How about that? Red man coverage and decided to test them early. But it proved up to the task and forced the incompletion. Second and 20. Now it's Stafford. Gonna be taken. He puts it on the carpet. It's out. Oh, one of the linebackers has got it. And they take over. They'll set up shop at the 46-yard line. A lot of talk this week about ball security. In fact, they added an extra period in practice to be more secure with the ball. It didn't work out there. Well, sometimes you just get overexcited during the game. You may all of a sudden make your catch, see some open field, and decide you're going for it and not realizing the danger lurks while you're doing so. And there's your end result right there. Now, before the ball changes hands, they're going to take a look at this just to make sure that they have it right. And the question, was the knee in fact down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field is reversed. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. So danger averted for the moment, but now here's a third and long. Now Stafford. Pressure comes, and down he goes. The Eagles get there for the sack. 
The pressure from multiple guys there as they bury him for a big nine-yard loss. Well, how about that? A dime set on defense, six defensive backs. None of them blitz. They're just back there in coverage. Defensive lineman gets the sack. That's where the O-line, they go to the sideline, they keep their, their helmets on so the cameras can't find them, right? Yeah, the cameras can't find them, but I know one thing, the O-line coach will. And they call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And the Eagles will have it taking over first and 10. Now Philadelphia ready to get going on offense again. We've seen both of these offenses still sort of in that figuring things out phase, but I suspect some action on the scoreboard soon as they start out here first and 10. They'll start by running the option to the right. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Now that's what he can do you know, when he keeps the football. It's not a huge gain, but it shows how hard it can be to stop him. Yeah, and I thought the defense had that one pretty well contained. And in fact, they probably came up and felt pretty good about what they did. Then they looked up and realized he still got good yardage out of it. He's a tough guy to stop. Throwing his hurts. This short throw caught by Goddard. And Goddard going to have an Eagles first down as the tackle made up around the 33-yard line. The gain of four that time as the drive continues. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. That one a broken play, but it ends up being a good play. The scramble goes for 20. I can't be sure how much of that was planned pre-snap, but it certainly opens up some avenues for their offense. And if he can stay a threat to break off those kind of runs, it'll pull defenders away from coverage and open up some choice throwing lanes for him moving forward. So from Rams territory now, it's first and 10 at the 47. Hurt sets up to throw it. And this one complete to Smith. Complete to Devontae Smith. A six-yard pickup brings up second and four at the 42-yard line. From the 42-yard line, here's second and four. And they'll fake it there on the jet sweep, and instead, here's Swift. And a very determined run there as he'll take this all the way down to the 27. Good effort. Philadelphia picking up the first on a gain of 15. Relatively small sample size, but that's his longest run of the first quarter. Bounced it out to the outside to make it successful. And to get there, you actually need some help. It's not just your pure speed getting to the corner, making sure that the blocking is taken care of inside so the pursuit doesn't get you. And oftentimes, those wide receivers, tight ends, that might be flexed out, they've got to control the edge and make sure no one from the outside can spill the play before he gets there. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. He finds his tight end, Goddard. That's complete. And he'll go down right on the edge of the red zone following a pickup of about seven or eight. That's probably as simple of a throw as he'll have all game. And good for everyone. Good for his completion percentage. Good for the receptions for the receivers. But you know how they work on that. They have footballs with no laces. So that as soon as you get the snap, you're just throwing the football. All right? You're not trying to find the laces and grip it a certain way. That takes time. Just get the ball and throw it. So that's how they practice it all the time now, too. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. What an excellent defensive stand there in the red zone. Nice, tight coverage. They certainly recognized how important it was to bring up fourth down here. The kick by Elliott is good. And the Eagles, they take a 3-0 lead. So, Charles, they are on the board after that kick. So, three drives, three points. Obviously not the start that you were hoping for, but 
they're able to erase that zero off the scoreboard. Yeah, I guess what you're saying is a point of drive is not what offenses are striving for by any stretch. They're happy they've got three now. They hope that that unlocks their offense for bigger points down the road. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. And this take it in at the goal line. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. L.A. set to take over again on offense. Still in the first half, but this offense has struggled. Haven't really been able to get anything going, not only in the points category, but in the yards category. We'll see if they can do better here on this drive. Stafford and the Rams come up first and 10 at their own 19-yard line. And they'll begin on the ground here with Evans. And he's tackled at the 38, but they doubled their yardage. The play started at the 19, and they gained 19. Interior of that line blocked really well on that run, but also the two tight ends, they blocked well too. Not only have they stouted the line of scrimmage, with their agility, they can get upfield and hit moving targets like linebackers, defensive backs. They do a really good job helping out the running game. Meanwhile, Stafford's throw, it's complete into the hands of Higby. It'll go down as a gain of six, and that'll bring up second down. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. From the 44 now, here's second and four. Here's Stafford. Out route to Jefferson, and he's got it. First connection there of the afternoon for those two, and it's good for a first down. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. From the 50 at Stanford. And his throw is going to be incomplete. But we keep stats on everything, don't we? This is one that you don't want to have. That's his second drop right here in the first quarter. Yeah, I was going to say only in the first quarter. Certainly a shift that he wants to write quickly. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. To the air again, Stafford. And this is caught by Evans. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. 3 nothing after one on EA Sports. The Rams with the football here to begin the second quarter. The offense on third down tonight, 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. They take a shot downfield there, but it winds up falling incomplete. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, there was not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. Ethan Evans on now to punt. They had no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. And it's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. Hurts and the Eagles come up here first and 10 at their own 21. Now a dump off here complete. Call it a gain of a yard, and that's going to bring up second down. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. From the 23, here's the second and nine. Back to throw. Open man is Goddard, the tight end. And this will go as a gain of seven as he gets it to the 30-yard line. 
Such a tough position to defend near the line, even when you add a second defender. But the big man shrugged off the extra body and made the play call a success. Third down and one. They'll try and run here with Swift. Shoves him away. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. A big pickup there for the Eagles' first down, 18 yards. Just about every coach we talk to says the crowd shouldn't affect us. That shouldn't be an issue. And then the next breath, they talk about taking the crowd and taking them out of the game by picking up first downs and keeping them at bay. I think we just saw an example of that there, didn't we? Important to do, especially early in the game like they have. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. They'll stay on the ground with Swift. And he's going to take this one across midfield and into Ram territory. A tackle there by John Johnson. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300-plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. Second down, here's Hurts. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. They well, certainly thought he had an open look beyond the first down marker to his receiver, but they just couldn't connect, and that will send them back to the drawing board. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. Throwing from the gun, it's Hurts. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. And based on my math, they've only converted one time thus far in this game. So you can see the frustration starting to come out a little bit. Third downs, they've been a problem for them all game. They've got to start becoming solutions. On fourth down, punt coming from Braden Mann. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? You, well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. Well, that's always a good place to throw it just because he's one of the biggest targets not only on this team but in the National Football League. And you and I both know the quarterbacks love these large body tight ends and why not? Nowadays, they're really wide receivers who are just taller and have a little bit more weight. These guys catch the football, make big plays downfield. In the old days, we wanted them to block. Now coaches want them to catch the football first. Stafford's throw pulled in by Hopkins. And he gets this up to the 34 out of bounds there. First target, first catch, and a first down. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. On first and 10, it's Evans. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Brandon, we just saw the benefits of being able to run the ball successfully. They pick up four yards on that carry. So now, if you're a play caller, you could do just about anything you want, but on the defensive side of the ball, you scramble a little bit. Now you're behind trying to figure out, do I need to blitz him? Do I need to pressure him? How do I gain an advantage on this snap? Evans gets it again on second down. And a five-yard gain gets him to the 42. Not a ton of room available on that one, but he made use of what space was available and gained decent yardage. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. They'll try and run for this with Evans. And he brings this up to the 46, good enough for the first. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. There are a lot of different formulas to winning football, but one constant over the years, winning on third down. That pickup there was big because they had struggled throughout this one. Couple of first downs to kick off the drive. Here's first and 10 up at the 46. 
They'll try the air now with Stafford. Over the middle and complete to the tight end, Higby. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. That's a gain of 13 first down Rams. Oh, I like that play call there. After a run for good yards, you get a defense thinking they'll go back to the well. So that's a great time to call play action and give your receivers a little extra edge. And they complete the pass there for another first down. There's a ball thrown right side and complete. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. And time to give some credit to the big fellows, the offensive line here, because you've got to have good protection on crossing routes because you've got to give your receiver time to work all the way across the field. That time, able to scan the field, spot his receiver moving left to right, and make a good, accurate throw. Thank you, guys. They'll run on first down with Evans. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four, second and six. But if you're going to have a relay race, you're probably going to pick your backs and receivers to run it. But don't underestimate the conditioning of the offensive line. They're out there just dictating things, staying on the field, and keeping a long drive going. Second and six. They'll stay on the ground, Evans again. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. Back-to-back four-yard runs. Now look, if they just do that all the way down, field ball ends up in the end zone, but that's a little difficult to do. Yeah, I think now third and two, that defense ready to stiffen up and stop that run. They'll try and run for it with Evans. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave him with a fourth down. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom, quick, 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 and what a terrific play, holding him to no gain. For the field goal, a 31-yard attempt. The kick by Maher is good, and that will tie us at 3-3. So they put together a good little drive there, but ultimately stalling out in the red zone. Yeah, I know a lot of people look at it as a little bit of a negative. They didn't get six points out of it, right? Didn't get the touchdown, but that's actually okay. They got three points, able to give their defense a little bit of rest, let them settle down over there. So all in all to me, that's a good drive. So far, 3-3 now as the kick is away. And the drive will begin at the 25 as Scott is going to stay in the end zone. Philadelphia getting set to take the field. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. Hurts and the Eagles come up here first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And that's out to the flat for Swift. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Play action. Here's Hurts. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. When we start looking for big-time corners, we're going to start with athleticism. But without technique, you're not going to make plays as one we just saw there. The Eagles on third down. Two for five to this point. Here it's third and three. On the option to give to Swift here. 
they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 45 yards rushing for him now on just six carries to this point. I think I saw a lot of shoulders just drop there. And what I mean by that is they finally were able to relax a little bit because that was an important play call. They needed to pick up that first down at this stage of the game. Yeah, couldn't afford another quick drive and out. Hurts throw complete here to his receiver, Brown. Call it a gain of six on the play, and it'll be second down. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tough for guys trying to get to the football. And he's going to take this one across midfield and into Ram territory. Four yards there on the keeper, but still going to bring up a third down. Typically on the read option play, when we talk about responsibilities, we're talking about what the quarterback has to go through. How about the inside linebacker, though? His job on this play, shadow the quarterback and hold him to a short gain. Did it to perfection. And Swift is not going to get there as they stop him short of the yellow line. Call it no gain that time, and they're going to be left looking up at a fourth and one. Remember, that was less than a yard. That was not a full yard. That defense, they were having none of it. Yeah, the surge offensive line was seeking actually occurred on the other side of the ball. They reestablished the line of scrimmage and stuffed them. Out now is the punter, Braden Mann. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. The Rams offense now making their way out to take over. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. They'll begin on the ground with Evans. And yeah, nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. And Brandon, every running back wants to use their speed in order to get out in front of things. Sometimes you just have to be patient, let blocks develop. On that play, that didn't happen. Second quarter, two minutes to go. Tie ball game. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll take you to Orlando and Jonathan Coachman. Coach will have highlights and analysis of this first half, one that's featured no touchdowns as of yet on either side. So his job's a little bit easier for this halftime need to give the, Need to get the coach some highlights here. Yes, we do. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Stafford work in the middle of the field and he's got a man complete and he is going to have a Rams first down as they're able to get the third down conversion that's a big conversion there on third down because they did not want to give the ball up here late in the half they'd love to take the clock all the way down and score this will definitely help the cause so from the 39 now they'll come up on a first and 10 Throwing is Stanford. Open man is Skoranek. He's got it. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. The Rams going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Stafford looks to throw again. On the screen, this is Evans. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. Boy, that was certainly well read defensively. And the key to any screenplay is space to work. And there was none to be found there. And they tackle it for just a short gain. 
Stafford barking out signals and trying to get his guys set quickly. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And that went too far in front. He couldn't reel it in. It's incomplete. They're putting together a drive here in the final minutes of the half. But the coverage has been tight all game long, and they certainly want to keep him off the scoreboard here. Seventh play of the drive, forthcoming on third and eight. Now Stafford. That is caught. Now the Rams will signal for a timeout, their second, as they'll stop it with 27 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. again as Stafford his throw incomplete and their backs up against the wall a little bit and they come through by forcing an incompletion now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple of more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage once again they'll go from the 23 yard line on second and ten back to throw Stafford that to the right sideline, and it falls incomplete. What would look like a march to the end zone has hit a momentary roadblock with that incompletion. No need to panic. They just got to come up with a high percentage play call and see if they can get their offense back on track. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Here's Stafford. to the right side and incomplete. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third, and now they deal with fourth down. Smart move to throw that one away. You're in field goal range, so you definitely don't want to be loose with the ball, and that's great work by this defense to force a fourth down. The kick by Marr is good. And they will take the lead here in this battle of field goals at 6-3. to three. So we're trading first half field goals. No breakthrough on the touchdown front. We've got a 6-3 game. Yeah, and I know so many people look at a game through offensive eyes, right? They want to see how the game's played that way. You know how I'm going to view it, right? The defenses, to me, have responded well in this game. Like what I'm seeing from them, both of them hoping to keep it to field goals and not give up big touchdowns. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. Time running short here. They'll simply take a knee, and that should do it for half number one. So if you like field goals, this is your game. 6-3, three, three field goals at the break. As we'll send you back over to Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report, here's Jonathan Coachman. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. This one's been as good as advertised. Just a field goal separating these two teams. This is a very level first half, and I'd expect to see more of the same after the break. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three.
It's the Eagles ready to see the football first, and they trail here as we resume action in this third quarter. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. The Eagles ready to go on offense to begin quarter number three. This is a game, Charles, that's been fairly starved for offense. Really not much in that first half. We'll see if they can get something going here as we look toward the third quarter. And not just a chance to finally get a little more offense going, but to erase that small deficit they currently trail by. I think they'd send a pretty powerful message to the opposite sideline if they drive it right down the field coming out of the half. Third quarter starts with a run from Swift. And he'll be tackled just past the 35 at the 36. 51 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Now, Brandon, that's the way you want to run the football. There should almost be quote bubbles above the offense right now. Bam, boom, biff. That's how they feel good about moving the football. Second down and four. Throwing his hurts. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still, with his talent, you would expect them to have more completions to him in this game. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Hurts. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he'll go out of bounds, it looks like, right at the 40. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. It used to be occasional, right, safety valve, throw one to him every so often, but mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they crease. And now off to the races, down the right side. DeAndre Swift, touchdown, Philadelphia. DeAndre Swift. 60 yards and the Eagles have taken the lead here in this third quarter and on that long run maybe the defense caught napping a little bit the concentration level may not have been there I agree with you on that one because those types of plays when they result like that they're almost like big bolts of lightning aren't they whoosh and off he goes on for the extra point Jake Elliott And he's got it as the lead is now 10-6. Just a four-play drive that time. And the last play, a really nice run that culminated in the touchdown. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. From the end zone, here comes Williams. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. Now the attention turns back to the Rams offense as they get ready for their first possession of the second half. And Charles, it feels like we're set up for a good second half here. Came out of the locker room, one score game. Now the lead has already changed hands. Well, this offense, they've got an opportunity right now to take that lead right back. Yeah, and it feels like you're going back and forth, almost a little bit like a tennis match, right? And we're just, you know, our heads just keep moving. Which side has it? Which side's going to score? How are they going to go out doing it? A little bit of a challenge for each side, trying to match each other. Going to be taken in here by Nakua. And he's going to step out of bounds all the way down on the other side of midfield. A big change in field position there. That's 40 yards on the catch and run. Uh, that's the kind of play this offense desperately needed. They've got to be saying, our defense has kept us in the ball game. We're down, but we're certainly not out. And maybe that was the spark that they've been searching for. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. Evans running behind center. Oh, that one well designed as he'll take this down to the 30-yard line. 
65 yards rushing for him now as he's run it 11 times. So they go pass, now they go run, and two plays resulting in really nice pickups. Certainly sounds like a 50-50 deal, doesn't it? Sounds like great balance. Well, you know what all those coaches have told us over the years, Brandon, that balance is? It means doing what you want to when you want to. That play call is working very well for them right now. A short gain here, maybe a yard to the 29. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. Play action, Stafford. Now that's to the left sideline and incomplete. Now right now, the story of this game continuing to be the defenses because the offenses, they're finding it difficult to establish any rhythm whatsoever. I like how you come to us in praise of defense, Brandon, because that's exactly right. That was an incompletion force there, but we've seen it throughout this game. Both of these defense coordinators, they're a step ahead of their offensive counterparts. Third down throw incomplete as well. Fourth down now looming after Philly's defense stands tall in coverage. We're going to give out a little applause on that play. It has to go to the defense. More good work by them. They've taken away the passing lanes all game long, and you can see the frustration that it's causing because he just about threw that one into the first row. Marr able to put this one through, and that gets him back within a single point. It's now 10-9. So the response to that touchdown on the other side to begin the third quarter, look, just three points, but still a response nonetheless. You're exactly right about that, because I think you needed to answer back with something, even though it's not six. Just enough to send the message that says, hey, we're not going away. To the main field goal. Marr back out there to kick it away. Boston Scott on the return from his end zone. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much as he's marked out officially at the 21. Well, let's shine the spotlight on the former Georgia Bulldog, DeAndre Swift, who's set to begin this next drive. He's looking sharp here so far in the third quarter, Charles. It appears that the halftime gave him a little bounce. You know, came out, spring in his legs, a little pep in his step. And he's taken off and running really well in the third quarter. Sometimes we talk about how guys don't want halftime to come, and some guys, they're happy when that break gets there. You never know which way it's going to go. He's taking advantage of it in this one, though. And yeah, they'll get to him quickly here as he'll get a yard, just a yard to the 22. Nice run defense presented there, and what I mean by that is discipline. The guys filling the right gaps in the right holes, no one over pursuing, and making a very nice play. From the 22 now, here's the second down and nine. Here's Hurts to throw. And this is caught. It's Brown. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. A gain of 28 yards there and give him a first down. They'll run right here with Swift. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here, second down. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game. And while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take him in short, steady bursts. From a couple of yards beyond midfield, here's second and eight. Hurt sets up to throw it. Fires the quick slant. A.J. Brown's got it. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Rams 33. Philadelphia picking up the first on a gain of 15. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're oiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive. 
Off the play fake. Here's Hurts. That one tipped and it's incomplete. But good hands there defensively at second down. So it looks like they still have some fight in them on this series because it seemed like things were headed for the red zone. But this defense gets two more stops. They can keep them out of that area. Here's second and ten. They'll set up to throw. This short throw caught by Goddard. Five yards, now it's third and five. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five. Again, he'll drop to throw. But it's caught on the right side at Smith. And he is going to have an Eagles first down by about a yard as they find a way to convert there on third down and five. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able. And Goddard's got it. Touchdown, Eagles. 23 yards for the touchdown. And the Eagles had six to their lead. Well, this offense only mustered three points in the first half on that field goal. They picked up the pace now. Two third-quarter touchdowns. Hey, you remember that appearance we had last week in front of that crowd, and, and they asked yeah. about halftime adjustments and all that that was going on. And remember what I said. It's not always an adjustment at halftime. Sometimes just remembering the game plan and playing better, tuning it up and just working through it methodically, they got it done in this game. Of course, I'll always remember that appearance because I had on a brown belt with black shoes and you pointed that out in front of the crowd. So thanks for that. I said that out loud. You did. Ah, my bad. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. And the L.A. offense ready for this next possession. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants a drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. They'll fake the give. Now Stafford has an open man, Skoranek. So the completion good for seven there. And that'll make it second down. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. Ball on the 28-yard line. Here's second down and three. Evans running straight ahead. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. This will be a loss of three, and now a much tougher third down looming. As a linebacker, you're taught to stay just slightly behind the ball carrier just in case he makes a cutback. But when you find the gap, shoot it. And he found it all right, took it straight into the backfield, and made the tackle for a loss. Throwing on third down, Stafford. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Rams first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QB has loved to make that easy throw. And they hooked up there for a first down. A give up the middle to Evans. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. 
And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. Second down and eight. Stafford now to throw. That's into the hands of 2-2 Atwell. And he is down at the 48. A pickup of four that started at 148-yard line and ended at the other. Well, there wasn't much there with that hitch route. They didn't gain what they expected. But sometimes when you call a hitch, you really don't have an alternate to go to. You don't have a second route to throw it to. So sometimes you have to rifle in there and hope for the best. To throw is Stafford. Pass complete there to Nakua. And he is going to have a Rams first down, although it doesn't appear to be by much. He needed four, and he got four on third down. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here on this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops and escape this drive. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Throwing a Stafford. To the sideline and incomplete. Van Jefferson was the intended receiver. And that'll make it third down. Now right where this set of downs started, they need a full 10 here to pick up the first down and move the chains. Stafford looks to throw again. Too much this time. Down he goes. Brought down by multiple defenders, and it's a loss of 12. Okay, I'm not sure you could actually draw a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. Here comes the Rams punter now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. And a fair catch called for and made at the 12-yard line. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And the Eagles will be backed up deep to get the drive started as they take over first and 10. Hurts and the Eagles come up here first and 10 at their own 13. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. This short throw caught by Goddard. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. You don't always expect tight ends to be big in terms of run after the catch, but after that play, he joins a growing band of players that's putting that stereotype right on its ear. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Looking to throw. He delivers another to Goddard, complete. It'll go as a gain of four, and it's second down. I don't care what sport you're playing, everyone likes to build up a little momentum, don't they? And look at this, back-to-back -back completions to the big target at tight end. That one not as profitable as the other, but still a decent gain. From the 35, here's second and six. They run out of the gun with Swift. And the ball is knocked out. And this is going to be an Eagles first down as he'll get this up to about the 42. Wow, that ball gets knocked free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. 
On first and ten, it's Swift. And he's across the 45. It'll be second down. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time and making it work. From the 46-yard line, a second down and six. He'll look to throw. And this will be caught by Brown. And A.J. going to pick up an Eagles first down as he's across midfield to the 48. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. So from Rams territory now, it's first and 10 at the 48-yard line. From the gun, it's Hurts. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. They decided the opportunity was there and launched a deep ball, but he was unable to get away from the defender, couldn't create space, couldn't uncover at the end of the route, and that one winds up incomplete. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Throwing his hurts. And that is going to be incomplete as he let him a bit too much. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice, or maybe even routes versus air, because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. Hurts. And he'll be brought down on what's going to turn out to be the final play of this third quarter. We have played three quarters. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now in Los Angeles. It's the Eagles in possession of the football and leading this one as we get ready to start the final quarter. But first down, Hurts. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Byron Young, the one who got in and finished that play off. We've seen him escape similar situations earlier in the game and get away from pretty good yardage, and that time they get him down. Yeah, they've had enough evidence that he can get away and run for good yardage, haven't they? That time it felt like, okay, enough of this. Let's play it the right way and get him on the ground before he does any damage. And down inside the 35, he goes to the 32-yard line. 127 yards rushing for him now as his sensational afternoon continues. The 25-yard line is what they need here. This is third down. They'll set up a throw. They'll try and set up the screen to Swift. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle is going to be made at the Rams 21. We'll give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. And that certainly appears to be a critical conversion right there because not only do they keep the drive going, they take valuable time off the clock as well. They have to feel really good about that last completion. They'll throw on first down with Hurts. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked off by Ernest Jones. And the Rams are right back in this football game. A seismic shift in momentum here in the fourth quarter. That's the break that the defense needed. And you know as well as I do, people got question the play call in that situation. Sometimes you have to question the execution, not necessarily the call. And in this case, those defenders found a way to give their team a chance. The offense for Los Angeles returns to the field. The interception sets them up with an opportunity to erase this fourth quarter deficit. Now this series could very well determine our outcome. Stafford and the Rams come up first and 10 at the 45. They'll run with a backup. This is Williams. And they'll get this just to the 47. One-yard gain. Brandon, one thing about blitzes, 
they really confuse offensive linemen at times. And what you have to do is lock in on the guy right in front of you. If you don't, you saw the end result. Defensive tackle end up making the play. Ball on the 47-yard line. Here's second and nine. A shotgun snap for Stafford. Throw left side, taken in by Jefferson. They'll wind up getting just a yard out of it. Third and seven now. Now it's Stafford. needed first down right there. Look, they're down by eight. So logic says they don't have to get a touchdown out of this drive. But the way things are going, I don't know if I'd put it in the hands of my defense here. You might not get the ball back at all. So if a fourth down situation comes up, I'm thinking hard about going for it right here and right now. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. From the 33, here's second and five. Again, it's Stafford. A throw right side here going to be incomplete. At this point in the second half, one mistake on a forced throw could doom your chances of a comeback, so that's the right call there to just throw that one away. They come up now, third and five, following the incomplete pass. Here's Stafford. And that's incomplete. And that's the knowledge you gained from being in this league for a long time. He's learned the hard way when to give up and fight another down. And that's a smart move to throw it away. One score down, here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. They snap it to Stafford. Work in the middle of the field. He's got a man complete. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. Fourth down, no problem. 19 yards that time, but now it's first and 10. Fourth down trailing in the fourth quarter. They felt compelled to go for it, and they got it. Well, I looked out at my play sheet, and what I would find plays have been successful throughout the game that have worked at the distance you need and that's exactly what they got done a new lease on life after the fourth down conversion here's first and ten now we give up the middle to Williams and he'll get about three just outside the ten stopped at the eleven well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play, stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. Now whistles and a flag down. I think one of the Rams linemen might have moved. So they accept the penalty, of course, and push the offense backwards a bit. Still second down. And that false start penalty certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. Again, it's Williams. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. Without the previous penalty, that would have been a first down. Instead, it's just a gain of 10. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking. And that's from the offensive linemen creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. Skolonic from six yards away. And the Rams have a chance to tie things up as they trail by two here in the fourth. So part one of what they needed is done. They get in the end zone. Now you have to imagine we'll see a try for two. And that's what the book says, but defensively, they can't hang their head right here. They still got a chance to come out with the lead if they make a play. All right, now a big two-point conversion attempt still to come. 
It's not going to make it. It's a big play by the defense, and they're going to hold on to their two-point lead. And the failure to convert and tie the game, now the pressure shifts back to the defense. But I think it was the right play. I think it was the right call to try and tie the game there. Kick an extra point, you're still down one. What's the sense? I, I like what they did. Following the touchdown, here's Marr to kick it away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Here comes Eagle offense now as they get set to take over here. I'm curious to see, Charles, about the play calling on this drive. Last time out, the interception that led to a touchdown. Here we are. I mean, very close. One score game. Yeah, and if I'm a defender... I'm actually chirping to you on the other side of the ball, said, hey, we picked off the last one. What you going to do about it now? <laughs> so when you do throw the football, high percentage, but throw it with confidence. Because if there's any hesitancy at all, it could end up in enemy's hands again. On the ground and swift to start the drive. And not much there. Maybe a yard up in the 24. Well, with the fumble he had earlier, we, we know how key keeping the football is here. That fumble earlier, probably at the forefront of his mind. Just hold on to this thing. It's also at the forefront of the mind of the guys who are trying to get the ball from him. And since they've seen him drop it on the ground before, they're doing everything possible to have him do it again. They need that turnover. Second down, here's Jalen Hurts rolling to his left. Able to slither by, and they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Hurts dangerous when he runs that football. He's got a first. It's getting cold in here, partner, because it looks like he's trying to ice this one away. Yeah, I know, bad dad joke, but what the heck, right? Scrambling for that first after the deep blanket his receivers, that's a backbreaker for the defense. They finish this drive off with six, and this one could be over. They try and run on first down, but to no avail. Tackle for a two-yard loss in the backfield. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. Second down, here's Hurts. He's got Dallas Goddard, his tight end over the middle. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", 6 6'5", 6 and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players. Somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination. Guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. A nice job there on the escape and scramble. A first down, a 16-yard gain. That is an absolute backbreaker. That was a design passing play, wasn't a draw. You think you got him stopped, good coverage downfield, and he's able to pick up the first with his legs defensively. That kicks into your psyche and hurts a little bit, doesn't it? It certainly does, and, and here's the thing. Anytime you give up a first down, it hurts you psychologically, but it hurts more when they get it this way because you've covered everything he didn't have any place to throw the football he takes off running and picks it up anyway and now you have to stay on the field for next he's got a man complete and that's gonna be caught for an eagles touchdown a.j brown 39 yards and the eagles are able to build on to their fourth quarter lead so a heck of a drive right there with the game potentially hanging in the balance. A very good drive, and now conversion to make it a two-score game and a solid lead. And now remember, all touchdowns are reviewed, and in a tight game Maybe like this, they're going to take a good long look at it. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. 
How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. After review of the play, the ruling on the field stayed. So they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review, so they had it right. Now an important extra point here to maybe salt this one away. And it is good, and the lead will swell to nine. So the drive there took six plays, and it's capped off by an A.J. Brown touchdown. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. From the end zone, here comes Williams. And the decision to bring it out, not a good one, as he's tackled at the 15. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And the script really is flipped for them. The momentum on the other sideline, and now they have to try and battle back from a two-score deficit. Stafford and the Rams come up first and 10 at their own 15. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Caught left side, Williams. They'll wind up getting just a yard, and it's second down. I know it was a game, but you have to sense probably a little bit of disappointment there because when it's out there in open space, I think they expect to get more out of a play, don't you? Especially when you're getting it to your guy out of the backfield. You're expecting him to be able to create something, be a little more shifty. Yeah, no doubt about it. Good open field tackling held it to an okay game. Now a throw downfield is taken in by his running back. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. That'll wind up a gain of 27 on the catch and run. Well, every drive from here out is definitely crucial and critical. They know that they need to get at least three here to get it back to a one-score game. I can't imagine that in their huddle that they're thinking at all about getting a field goal. They want to get into the end zone and then try and get the ball back again. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. Now a second and 10. To the air again, Stafford. Complete, Jefferson the target. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. And we're definitely getting towards the point of the game where not getting a lot of yards is secondary to keeping the clock moving. I mean, to me, that's a double win defensively. Short gain and some more time off the clock. And they're gonna speed things up here. Throwing on third down, Stafford. He's gonna get that to his running back out of the backfield. And he has another first down as he'll get the ball down to the Eagles 35. And in a two score game, obviously every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want though, is to not even get to third down. They've gotta maximize time and conserve as much as possible. Out of the gun, Stafford. Finding Williams once more, complete. And they're gonna be set up down around the 15 yard line. All three timeouts remain, but they've gotta score quick. It's first and 10. Now it's Stafford. Limited time left on the clock after that incompletion. So I think both sides are going to savor every second to prepare before the next snap. Because once the ball's in motion, it may be a nonstop push to finish this drive off. Everyone better be on the same page right now because I think they're going to try and get several plays off in quick succession if they can. 
Stafford now to throw. This one brought in by Jefferson. A big play here, third and two. Stafford. He's got his target. That's complete. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defense side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. Whew, that's certainly not the worst thing. It stops the clock and lets your offense catch its breath and lets us exhale a little bit. Now I expect them to call a couple plays in the huddle, so they're ready if a tackle happens inbounds. Here now, second and goal. Now Stafford to the end zone, but it's incomplete. And now the focus is really clear. They need to get that first down and either get out of bounds or maybe use one of those timeouts. This Eagle defense, they won't give in without a fight. This is third and goal. From the gun, here's Stafford. And he wisely will throw that one away. So it's been a long drive. They've held the ball for quite a while. Now what do you do here? Well, to me, at this stage, after this drive, this close to the goal line, three points would be a letdown. I'm going for it here. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. This to get it back to a one-score game. The kick by Maher is good. And that'll move them back within six now. So it was fourth down and one in the red zone, but they elect to take just the three. And I'm a little bit surprised that that's exactly what they decided to do. I kind of thought that they would go for it in that situation. But sometimes I'm sure you just think to yourself, take the three points, put them in your pocket, and move on. So a little under 50 seconds to go. Plenty of time if they can get this onside kick. And the Eagles are going to recover. And that might be enough to put a bow on this one. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% <laughs> of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. They show run with three tight ends here on first down. And they'll fake it there on the jet sweep, and instead, here's Swift. The Rams going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the game. Second down and six now. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. Now the Rams will signal for a timeout their second as they stop it here with just under 40 seconds to go in the game. So third down, they need to get to the 28 for a first. On the option to give to Swift here. The Rams going to be forced to use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play. So 
So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to perhaps salt this one away. And he missed it. It's no good. And this will stay a one-score game as the lead will hold at six. The things just got interesting. They try for the long field goal there to salt this one away. They don't get it. And now a little time for the other guys to battle they drive. Well, they thought their kicker would put it through the post and finish this one off. I'm sure they discussed pooch punting it and letting their defense take over. Well, the defense now has to make it stand up, but they didn't get the best field position because the ball comes back to the line of scrimmage. This is first and 10. They'll look to throw. He's going to let it fly. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. And they were looking to throw, holding on the big right tackle. That's real simple, partner. Keep your hands inside in the chest area. You're probably okay. You get it out on the shoulders, get them wide. You just got to pick up a holding call. So the road a little tougher here. Now first and 20. Back to throw. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Buried by multiple defenders on the drive's first play. And a fun, close ball game comes to an end. On that last play, Charles, they were on the wrong side of midfield. They needed something near a miracle, and they couldn't get it done. Yeah, the effort, that was good. Very good, in fact. They were just a little too far out to get a decent look at the end zone for that last opportunity. Couldn't get it done, but a nice game overall.